Hey fellow Affinity designers, this is a quick walkthrough of an illustration I did of a Humboldt lily. It's not photorealistic, but it's not exactly cartoony either, so it's kind of a mixture of the two styles. And it's mostly using um, clipping masks and uh, blending modes, transparency, and a little bit of noise. And that's about it. So um, kind of, I'm, I'm going to be mostly silent for this, but if you watch uh, the process. It's mostly just creating groups, stacking them, and then clipping items inside of other items and making copies of that using blend modes to create shadow and highlights, um, noise for a little bit of a texture, and then I used a little bit of uh, the pixel mode, um, or the pixel persona rather, to um, create some texture. Uh, initially I was going to use some uh, texture brushes and then I thought better of that and just blurred it out and stack some of those with different um, opacities and blend modes to create kind of a, a slightly modeled look, which is actually a lot like the background that the photo uh, reference for this was um, was like. So I what I did was uh, I found an image on the internet and then hand drew a kind of skeleton approach, and that just kind of helped me think through um, how I was going to use the tools to be most efficient. So um, you know, I kind of mapped out where the gradients were going to go, um, what I wanted to add noise to, and um, I decided uh, an actual lily has kind of a modeled appearance that goes from the dark modeling at the core and then kind of fades out into smaller pieces at the edges. That was a lot of work, so I decided just to find a, a texture brush to create that same effect um, or something similar to it using <coughs> several grouped um, vector brushes and then I grouped them and then applied a um, Gaussian blur effect to soften that eventually. And then just by changing the opacity of the near and far pedals and also the, the pedals that have uh, where the back is turned toward us, that modeling is going to get fainter to show because I guess the modeling on the actual flower is only on the, the uh, open surface, the, 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 the side that's on the um, close to the stamen and uh, kind of the part that folds back doesn't really have the modeling. It just shows through the thin skin of the flower petal. So, um, you know, I try to balance going fully geometric with a little bit of organic shape. So you'll notice that I'm going to trap those three little gradient strokes that I'm doing right now um, inside the, the basic bulb. But then later on, I'm going to go back and um, adjust some of the edge of that bulb to create, um, to allow some of those details to stick out so it's not just a flat circle. And for the shading of the bulb part, I'm just going to create a shape, apply a Gaussian blur in the effects, um, layer effects, and then I use the transparency tool to gently fade that out. That's a great way to create these shadows and highlights. Just use the Gaussian blur. Um, to create some soft edges already, uh, already and then use the transparency tool to softly blur. You could ma manually make a mask, but the nice thing about the transparency tool is it's already set and gives you a lot of uh, flexibility to, um, you know, just visually do it. Here I wanted to create a shadow, but I didn't want all the, um, the uh, stamens to have the exact same shadow, so I created the half circle and then um, variegated the edge just so it looks like the shadow is falling. This is, again, <laughs> not photorealistic. If I wanted to spend a lot more time, I could, um, you know, heighten the details. I just kind of want to give the impression of the flower um, in its kind of simplified form, and um, that'll be good for me today. Here I'm just going to add some uh, some more of those uh, petal textures to the back facing petals and I'll just lower the opacity way down so that it's faint and it looks like it's um, shining through. I'm just going to create extra depth. There's also kind of a, a rib on the backs of these petals to give stability. So I'm just going to create um, use a stroke. I use the, uh, um, the pressure options on the stroke uh, menu to um, 
create a thick to thin stroke and then made one dark, one light, and uh, blurred them out a little bit. So at this point, the lily is basically done. I'm going to create a background. My initial thought was to uh, you know, cre create some texture, almost like a graphical look. That did not end up working out, so I grouped uh, the, the texture layers I created, um, rasterized them, and then blurred them all together, and then created copies of them on top of a dark green background, as you'll see. And just by shifting around the blending modes, I actually created um, totally different effects that could overlap, adjusted the transparency, and the final result looked a lot like the background from the photo reference that I used for this, so that was kind of fun. And then to wrap it up, I'm going to add a little more shading um, just to differentiate some of the back pe petals, adding a uh, gradient overlay and some uh, another kind of gradient over the whole thing, and then one especially on kind of the opening stem on the left-hand side just to put the focus on the flower center and not leading away from the illustration, which is never a good idea. <laughs> And then I'm just going to wrap up by um, handwriting the words Humboldt Lily. And that'll be it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And we'll catch you next time.